Hello, I'm Dallas Johnson, lead instructor of the Automobile Dealer Training Association. First of all, I want to thank you for choosing the Automobile Dealer Training Association as your Texas dealer licensed training partner. I also want to congratulate you on your decision to start a new business. And I'm going to do my very best to help you apply for your dealer license correctly and to show you how to operate your new business following all state and federal guidelines. In your Texas dealer training course, we're going to cover several training units and you will not be able to fast forward through any training unit. You must view the entire video for each training unit before you can move on to the next training unit. However, after the course, you can easily review all the videos at the TexasDealers.com website. And at that time, you will be able to fast forward through the videos to find the exact training content that you want to review. But you will only get credit for the course by being logged into the learning management system and viewing each training unit. I want to remind you this course is designed to be viewed in Google Chrome. At the end of the course, once you've completed the videos in each unit, you will be able to easily download your certificate of completion that you will submit with your dealer license application to show the state that you have completed your mandatory dealer license training so you can apply for your dealer's license. The first thing I want to do with you is give you some really valuable contact information. Texas dealers are regulated by the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles Motor Vehicle Division, and they have what is known as the Dealer Licensing Section. The Dealer Licensing Section has oversight over dealers. They're going to process your initial dealer application and your subsequent dealer license renewals. And they're located at 4000 Jackson Avenue, Austin, Texas, 78731. I also want to make sure you have their phone number, which is 888-368-4689. Once again, that number is 888-368-4689. This is a great phone number that you can reference if you have specific questions about obtaining your dealer's license or once you have become a licensed dealer, you can call them with questions after you have obtained your license. You can also send an email to askdmv at txdmv.gov. Once again, that is askdmv at txdmv.gov. You can also click on the txdmv.gov website at txdmv.gov backslash dealers to visit the Texas Department of Motor Vehicle website's dealer section. You can also use the contact us section of the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles website that you see here, and that's txdmv.gov backslash contact dash us. And there at the bottom of the screen, you see a link to e-licensing that you will log on to here in just a little while, and I'll show you how to do that so you can apply for your dealer license. Here you see the contact page for the Department of Motor Vehicles dealer licensing section. You can see lots of helpful phone numbers, you know, don't ever hesitate to use these resources because you always have help that is a phone call away. Here you see on the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles website, you're going to find links to Web Dealer, which we're going to cover extensively later in the course. You'll see a link to the e-licensing section, which we will jump into in just a moment to apply for your dealer license and many other helpful resources for dealers. Let's go ahead and get started with Unit 1. In Unit 1, we're going to cover the types of licenses that are issued by the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles. I'm going to show you how to become a Texas Motor Vehicle Dealer, and then I'm going to show you how to submit your dealer license application via e-licensing. First, we will cover the types of licenses, since there are actually several types of different licenses that are granted by the state. The state of Texas issues the following types of dealer licenses. Retail, General Distinguishing Number, Wholesale, General Distinguishing Number, Franchised Dealer License, Converter License, Salvage Dealer License, Manufacturer License, Distributor License, In Transit License, Vehicle Lesser License, and a Lease Facilitator License. I want you to be aware that Retail GDN Licenses are basic licenses that are broken down into five categories. If you want to sell vehicles from multiple categories, you will need to have a license for each category. And I want to repeat that. If you want to sell vehicles from multiple categories, you will need to have a license for each category. So if you want to sell motor vehicles and travel trailers, you will need a motor vehicle license and a travel trailer license. The five categories are motor vehicle, motorcycle, travel trailer, trailer semi-trailer, and independent mobility motor vehicle dealer. Always remember, 
Retail dealers can sell retail to a customer on the lot or wholesale directly to another dealer or at a dealer auction. Motor Vehicle GDN Dealer License. A motor vehicle GDN allows you to buy, sell, or exchange, exchange used cars, trucks, motorhomes, and neighborhood electric vehicles. You may buy, sell, repair, or rebuild salvage motor vehicles and non-repairable motor vehicles. A motor vehicle GDM allows you to use dealer temporary tags, buyer temporary tags, and metal dealer license plates only on motor vehicles. And by the way, we will cover dealer temporary tags, buyer temporary tags, and metal dealer license plates later in the course. This license does require you provide a dealer surety bond. The license allows you to sell vehicles retail to customers on the lot or wholesale directly to other dealers or through dealer auctions as well. A motorcycle GDN. A motorcycle GDN allows you to buy, sell, or exchange used motorcycles, mopeds, off-highway vehicles, which would be ATVs, ROVs, and UTVs, or auto cycles. It also allows you to buy, sell, repair, or rebuild salvage motor vehicles and non-repairable motor vehicles. This license allows you to use dealer temporary tags, buyer temporary tags, and metal dealer license plates only on motorcycles, mopeds, or off-highway vehicles. And this license does also require that you provide a dealer surety bond. Travel trailers. A travel trailer GDM allows you to buy, sell, or exchange used travel trailers. And by the way, a travel trailer is defined as a house trailer type vehicle or a camper trailer that is a recreational vehicle or that is less than 8 feet 6 inches in width or 45 feet in length. And it is designed primarily to be used as temporary livering quarters in connection with recreational camping, travel, or seasonal use. It is not a permanent dwelling and it is not a utility trailer, an enclosed trailer, or other trailer that does not have human habitation as its primary function. This license would allow you to buy, sell, repair, or rebuild salvage motor vehicles and non-repairable motor vehicles. You may use dealer temporary tags, buyer temporary tags, and metal dealer license plates only on travel trailers, and this type of license does not require a dealer surety bond. Trailer Semi-Trailer. A trailer semi-trailer GDM allows you to buy, sell, or exchange new or used utility and semi-trailers. You may buy, sell, repair, or rebuild salvage motor vehicles and non-repairable motor vehicles. You may use dealer temporary tags, buyer temporary tags, and metal dealer license plates only on trailers and semi-trailers. It does not require a dealer surety bond. And please be aware this is the only GDN license category that allows you to sell brand new vehicles without a franchised dealer license. Independent Mobility Motor Vehicle Dealer. An independent mobility motor vehicle dealer license or GDM allows you to sell new and used vehicles that have been converted into mobility vehicles at a specific location. You must have an agreement with the licensed franchise dealer of the underlying chassis of the mobility vehicle. A mobility motor vehicle is designed to transport a person with a disability. This type of license also requires the applicant to hold a converter's license. I want you to be aware that all independent motor vehicle GDN license types, with the exception of wholesale, wholesale auction, and independent mobility motor vehicle dealers may operate as a salvage dealer as of September 1st, 2019 without a separate salvage license as long as it is only at the same business location for which the dealer license was issued. And I want to repeat that important information. Most independent GDN license types may now operate as a salvage dealer without a separate salvage license, but it has to be the same location as the license is issued, also a sales and use tax permit, a sales tax ID, and a National Motor Vehicle Title Information System number would also be required if operating as a salvage dealer. Once again, wholesale, wholesale auction, and independent mobility motor vehicle dealers are excluded. Wholesale General Distinguishing Number. A wholesale GDN or wholesale dealer license allows you to purchase and sell vehicles to other wholesale, to other dealers or at dealer auctions. You may not sell a vehicle to a person without a dealer's license, such as a retail customer on your display area. 
You may never sell a vehicle to the general public with a wholesale dealer license. A wholesale license allows you to buy, sell, or exchange used vehicles, including motor vehicles, motor cycles, and travel trailers. You may buy, sell, or exchange new and used trailers or semi-trailers. It does not require a display lot, but you must provide a dealer surety bond. If you hold a wholesale dealer license and you want to sell vehicles to the general public, you will need to amend your license to a retail dealer license. Retail and wholesale dealers may not have offices in the same business structure. For example, a building with a shared roof line, regardless of even if they have different suite numbers. If other wholesale dealers are in the same building, you will need to move to a new location if you're ever amending a wholesale dealer license to a retail license. There's also a wholesale motor vehicle auction license. A wholesale motor vehicle auction license is just a little bit different because a wholesale motor vehicle auction dealer license allows the licensee to offer vehicles for sale at dealer auctions and it can also hold auctions. So I want you to be aware that changing a license type from wholesale to retail would require an amendment application to be submitted in e-licensing. Franchise dealers. A franchise dealer license is required to sell new motor vehicles. A franchise dealer may sell new and used vehicles. A franchise dealer is referred to as a franchisee. If a franchisee also wants to sell used motor vehicles, then they will also be able to do that with their license. A franchise license is required to sell all types of motor vehicles, including motorcycles, travel trailers, ATVs, and ROVs. A franchise motor vehicle dealer may operate several dealerships in the same city with the same GDM. Each separate location, however, does require a separate franchise license. Franchise dealers are authorized to sell specific line makes and must amend their license when adding or removing line makes to a location. A converter license. A converter license is required if you assemble or install special equipment to a vehicle chassis before offering the vehicle for retail sale. A conversion means a motor vehicle that has been substantially modified by a person other than the manufacturer or distributor of the chassis of the motor vehicle and has not yet been the subject of a retail sale. A converter means basically a person who, before the retail sale of a motor vehicle, assembles, installs, or affixes a body cap or special equipment to a chassis or substantially adds, subtract, subtracts from, or modifies a previously assembled or manufactured motor vehicle. Neither converters nor their representatives are allowed to sell new motor vehicles they convert directly to customers, including cities. Only dealers that are franchised and licensed for the underlying line make of the converted vehicle are allowed to sell converted vehicles to consumers. Remember, converters cannot sell to the public if they do not have a franchise license. And the conversion may but does not have to include special equipment. A salvage dealer license. A salvage dealer is engaged in the business of buying, selling, repairing, or rebuilding salvage motor vehicles and non-repairable motor vehicles. A salvage motor vehicle has been damaged or it's missing a major part causing the cost to repair the vehicle to be higher than the actual cash value of the vehicle before it was damaged. A salvage motor vehicle may be repaired or rebuilt so it can be titled as a rebuilt motor vehicle and registered to operate on public roadways. Rebuilt vehicles must pass inspection to be titled and sold as used motor vehicles using a GDN license. You must be licensed as a GDN or salvage dealer if you buy or sell more than five salvage or non-repairable motor vehicles in a calendar year or rebuild more than five salvage motor vehicles in a calendar year. Remember, all retail and salvage inventory must always be separate. Remember, independent GDNs, except for wholesale or independent mobility motor vehicle dealers, may operate as a salvage dealer without a separate license. But remember, it has to be at the same location. You have to have a sales and use tax permit and ID and a national motor vehicle title information system number as well. Manufacturer license. A manufacturer license is required if you assemble or manufacture new vehicles for sale by franchise motor vehicle dealers. Those are what we call those franchisees. Manufacturers are prohibited from selling vehicles directly to the general public. They must sell the vehicles they manufacture to franchisees, and then the franchisees sell those vehicles to the general public. 
Distributor license. A distributor license is required for anyone that distributes or sells vehicles to franchised motor vehicle dealers. They sometimes act as an intermediary between a vehicle manufacturer and a franchised motor vehicle dealer. An in-transit license. An in-transit license allows a driverway operator to transport and deliver a vehicle in Texas from the manufacturer or another point of origin. Driveway operators may apply for, receive, and attach metal in transit license plates to vehicles that they transport. Vehicle lessor license. A vehicle lessor license is required for any person that offers vehicles for lease of more than 180 days. A dealer may not have the word lease or leasing in the dealership name unless the dealer has a vehicle lessor license. Retail and wholesale license holders and vehicle lesser license holders may not share an office. A lease facilitator license. A lease facilitator license acts you know, as a licensing agent for a vehicle lesser licensee. This person acts as an intermediary between the vehicle lesser and the person that is leasing the vehicle. Retail license holders and lease facilitator license holders may not share an office. Also, I want you to be aware a lesser or lease facilitator may only share an office with another dealer if the other dealer or business is 100% owned by the same lesser or lease facilitator. Next, I want to cover the steps that are required to obtain a general distinguishing number, that's your dealer's license, and we are going to cover the entire process, including submitting your application, we'll talk about criminal history, We'll go over your business building requirements and your display area requirements. We'll talk about your sign and your hours and the state's dealer surety bond requirements. And then we're going to talk about registering your name with the Secretary of State or possibly the county that your dealership is in. Licensing with OCCC if financing. We're going to cover records. I will talk about your mandated I-9 employment form. We'll go over your employer identification number. And then we'll talk briefly about the dealer educational course. And then I'll show you how to pay your dealer license pay fees. And you can either pay those with credit card or e-check. Submitting your dealer application at e-licensing. You must submit your dealer application through the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles e-licensing website. Your application must be submitted online through e-licensing. The Texas Department of Motor Vehicles no longer accepts license applications by mail. If you need assistance during the e-licensing process, you can call 888-368-4689, and that's the number I gave you just a moment ago. You can submit your dealer license application at the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles website at txdmv.gov, which will take us to e-licensing. I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a minute, and you can just scroll down on the home page and just under the dealers section, you will click on the e-licensing login link. And as I said, you will be able to pay for your license with a credit card or e-check. The application process is quite extensive and must be completed correctly and in its entirety. Mistakes on your dealer license application can cause significant delays in your licensing process. So we will submit your dealer application online later in your dealer training course to make sure that it is done correctly. Criminal history. Before you receive your dealer's license from the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles, the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles must review your criminal history and the criminal history of all owners and managers that are listed on the license application. All owners and managers must disclose all prior offenses, both convictions and those that, referred in, that resulted in deferred adjudication in any jurisdiction. All convictions and deferred adjudications must be disclosed regardless of whether the sentence is completed and considered dismissed or expunged. I also want you to be aware that once a license has been issued, any new offenses that result in conviction or deferred adjudication by any owner or manager in any jurisdiction must be reported immediately through e-licensing by selecting the amend a license option. So. 
If anyone has any new offenses during their license period, they must notify the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles. Criminal history will be reviewed on all new license applications, renewal license applications, and amendment applications that reflect any change in ownership or management. The existence of a criminal history does not automatically disqualify a person from gaining a dealer's license. The Texas Department of Motor Vehicles will review criminal history on a case-by-case basis. When you complete the information when applying for your license through the e-licensing system, you must answer all questions correctly, not only for yourself, but for each owner and manager that is listed on the application. If you make false statements during your application process, you may have your license denied, canceled, revoked, or suspended. You may also face criminal prosecution. Many of the rules governing criminal history are listed in the Criminal Offense Guidelines in Chapter 43 of the Texas Administrative Code, Rule 211.3. And in just a little while, I'll show you how to easily look up the rules in the Texas Administrative Code. If you have a criminal history, court records must be submitted with your dealer application. These records can usually be obtained by contacting the district court or the county in which the offense occurred. Business building. You must have a place of business to be used for the purpose of selling motor vehicles. It must be located in a building with connecting exterior walls on each side. The building must meet all local zoning requirements. The building must either be owned or if the building is leased, the lease may not be for less than two years. It has to be at least two years if you don't own the building. You've got to have a lease for at least two years. You must have an office in the building for the operation of your dealership. The office cannot be located within an apartment house, hotel, motel, or rooming house. If the office is located at a private residence, it must be completely separate from the actual resident and must also meet the zoning requirements from that city or county. Before you rent or purchase a building to operate your dealership, you must count, contact your local planning and zoning office at either your city hall or your county courthouse to ensure that you can operate a dealership at that location. A certificate of occupancy or a COO is required if a certificate of occupancy is required by the city or the county. The certificate of occupancy must be in the name of the dealer's business and must state the use. For example, you must clearly disclose that motor vehicles will be sold at that location. Texas Department of Motor Vehicles enforcement officers may request documentation to ensure zoning requirements have been met. Your office must include, at minimum, a desk, two chairs, internet access, and a working telephone listed in your dealership name. I want to repeat that very important statement. Your office must include, at minimum, a desk, two chairs, internet access, and a working telephone listed in your dealership name. The dealer phone number may never be shared with another dealer. You must have your own phone number. The internet access that you are required to have may be wireless internet access. If a dealer shares their location with another business, the dealer must have their own office area. I want to repeat that very important statement as well. If a dealer shares their location with another business, the dealer must have their own office area. The state allows up to four retail dealers to operate out of one building and up to eight wholesale dealers to operate out of one building as well. But remember, retail dealers and wholesale dealers can never operate out of the same building. Your display area. Your display area must be of sufficient size to display at least five vehicles of the type for which the GDN is issued. Once again, your display area must be of sufficient size to display at least five five vehicles of the type for which the GDN is issued. Those spaces must be reserved exclusively for the retail dealer's inventory and may not be shared or intermingled with another business or a public parking area or driveway to the office, or they can never be intermingled with another dealer's display area. The display area may be located outside the building or inside the building. This retail sales area must be kept from kept separate from any wholesale vehicles that are being held for resale. Also, as stated before, retail and salvage inventory always needs to be kept separately. The display lot cannot be a driveway and must be hard surface such as concrete or gravel. 
Some local ordinances may even require the dealer display lot to be paved. The lot must meet all local zoning requirements. The display lot must be separated from any other business repair shop, a driveway to the office, or any other dealer area, as I said. If a retail dealer shares a display area or a parking area with another business, including another dealer, the dealer inventory must be separated from the other business's display lot or parking area by a material object or barrier which cannot be readily moved. So you have to have some physical separation there. And I do want to talk about that for a minute. Let's say your dealership is located next door to another business. You want to ensure your lot is physically separated from any other neighboring business's customer parking so a neighboring business's customer never parks on your display area and then one of your customers thinks that vehicle is for sale. Well, this is confusion that the state wants to make sure that you avoid. So always make sure a neighboring business or another dealer vehicles are never parked on your display area. Such separation must be properly maintained during the entire period for which a used motor, vehicles dealer, used motor vehicle dealer license is held. If a dealer is going to operate at night, the display area must be eliminated. One more time on that as well. If a dealer is going to operate at night, then the display area must be eliminated. Dealers can have a display area that is not part of the lot. The display area must be located at the retail dealer's business address or next to the retail dealer's address. A storage lot not next to the dealer's retail address is permissible only if there is no public access and no sales activity occurs at the storage lot. A sign stating the retail dealer's name, telephone number, and the fact the property is a storage lot is permissible. If your customer is interested in a vehicle that you have on the storage lot, then you or a salesperson would need to bring the vehicle from the storage lot to the retail sales lot to show the vehicle. Remember, you can never have sales activity on a storage lot. Once you become a licensed dealer, you may only have retail sales activity at your licensed location. And I want to talk about this for a moment. Let's say your lot is in downtown Austin and someone just out to sit outside the city finds your vehicle for sale on the internet. They might state they can't make it to downtown and they might ask you to bring it to, say, for example, a parking lot near their home. You can never, ever show the vehicle at a non-licensed location. Conducting any type of retail sales activity away from your, your licensed location is a violation of the law. And you will have to explain to some of your customers that the state does not allow you to show your vehicles at a location away from your dealership. The retail sales activity may only take place at your licensed location. And on a side note, wholesale vehicle dealers are exempt from the display area requirement. Business sign. You will need a permanent business sign that is visible from the public roadway. The dealership name on the sign must be at least six inches high or larger and must match either the DBA or assumed name certificate filed with the county, and that would be for sole proprietors and general partnerships, or the business name DBA that's registered with the Texas Secretary of State if you're opening your business as a corporation, an LLC, or an LP. And by the way, we will cover business registrations in just a few moments. The sign must be mounted at the address listed on the dealer application. Your sign must match the exact name of your dealership as it is listed on your application. The sign is not required to have any type of business entity information, such as Inc., or LLC or LP, uh, you do not have to have business entity information on your sign. However, the sign must be permanent in nature and clearly visible to the public. A banner is not an acceptable business sign, nor are magnet boards or handmade cardboard signs. A dealer may use a temporary sign as long as they can produce a sign order that shows a sign has been paid for and ordered. Most printing companies can produce a permanent business sign at minimal cost. Wholesale dealers must follow the same GDN requirements, that is, to have a permanently mounted business sign with at least six inches high letters on the dealership name, but they may mount a sign on the office door with two inch letters if the landlord does not allow outside signage. Be sure the letters in the dealership name meet the minimum height requirements under Texas state law. Business hours. A retail dealer must be open at least four days a week for at least four consecutive hours per day. 
A wholesale dealer must be open at least two days per week for at least two consecutive hours per day. Business hours must be prominently displayed near the entrance to the building. You may post your business hours on the front of the building, on a window, or maybe even on your business sign. Each dealer must post their own hours even if they are sharing uh, the same building. The dealership must be open and staffed during the posted hours of operation. The dealership must be staffed either by an owner or bona fide employee. If you are not able to staff the dealership during the posted hours due to an emergency or some special circumstances, you must post a sign that states the date and time that you will return. If the dealer ever changes the hours of operation, the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles does not have to be notified, but you would have to change your signage. Any customer must be able to view your vehicle inventory without an appointment. Regardless of the retail dealer's business hours, the retail dealer's telephone must be answered from 8 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. weekdays by a bona fide employee, answering machine, or answering service. I want to repeat that very, very important statement. Regardless of the retail dealer's business hours, the retail dealer's telephone must be answered from 8 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. weekdays by a bona fide employee, answering service, or answering machine. Texas Blue Law prohibits motor vehicle dealers from selling vehicles on Saturday and Sunday. A dealer may choose to be open on a Saturday or Sunday, but never on both days. Travel trailer and trailer semi-trailer dealers may operate seven days a week. If a person holds a motor vehicle license and a trailer license, they may open on Saturdays and Sundays, but cannot sell motor vehicles on Saturday and Sunday. And I want to repeat that. If a person holds a motor vehicle license and a trailer license, they may open on Saturday and Sundays, but cannot sell motor vehicles on Saturday and Sunday. Motor vehicles may only be sold on Saturday or Sunday, never on both days. Dealer surety bond. You must obtain a $25,000 dealer surety bond in order to obtain a Texas used motor vehicle dealer's license. The surety bond is used for replenishing funds used to compensate retail purchasers of motor vehicles. The name and address on the dealer surety bond must match exactly the name on the dealer application that's been filed with the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles. The bond must be issued in the legal first and last name of the sole proprietor or general partnership if the business is a sole proprietor or general partnership. For all other businesses that file with the Texas Secretary of State's office, the name must match the exact full name of the registered business name. The bond must be issued for two years and must start on the first day of the month and end on the last day of the month corresponding to the license term. For example, February 1st of 2021 to January 31st of 2023. You must maintain your dealer surety bond during your entire licensure period. I want to repeat that. You must maintain your bond during your entire licensure period. The bond must be signed by both the owner and the bond company representative. This is one of the most common mistakes and causes delays in license approval. The bond must include a power of attorney from the bonding company as well. And I will show you how to submit that here in just a moment through e-licensing. A bond writer may be required if bond information is incorrect or needs to be revised. Franchisees, travel trailer dealers, and utim utility semi-trailer dealers are exempt from the dealer surety bond requirement. And always remember the bond pricing is based on your credit score. A dealer surety bond may be obtained from an insurance agent or a bonding company. Registering the business name with the Texas Secretary of State or the county that your dealership is located. Many businesses will be required to register their name with the Texas Secretary of State's office and include copies of each registration with the dealer application. The Texas Secretary of State wants to have a record of most businesses that are operating in the state. Sole proprietors and general partnerships are excluded. However, sole proprietors and general partnerships must file an assumed name certificate. Sometimes we call that a DBA or doing business as, but they have to file an assumed name certificate in any county that they operate in uh, if they're using a name other than their proper name. Registering your business with the Secretary of State and with the county is covered in greater detail later on in your dealer training course. 
For additional information on registering your business, you can contact the Texas Secretary of State Business and Commercial section via email, and that's going to be at corpinfo at sos.tex.gov. I'm sorry, sos.texas.gov, or you can call them at 512-463-5555. And we will cover that process extensively here in just a little while. Licensing with the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner, if offering financing. Before you offer third-party financing or buy here, pay here financing, every dealer in Texas must obtain a license with the Texas Office of Consumer Credit Commission. You can obtain the license at www.occc.texas.gov or you can call 512-936-7600 for further information. And we're going to cover that licensing process extensively later on the course if you are assisting your customers with any type of financing. Records. You must maintain records on all vehicles purchased, leased, and sold for a minimum of 48 months. That's four years. The current and previous 13 months of records must be kept at the dealer's license location and be ready to be inspected by a Texas Department of Motor Vehicle representative. The remaining 35 months of records can be stored at a location other than the licensed dealership as long as it's in the same county. Records may be stored either via paper or electronically for a period of at least four years. Federal law requires some records to be kept at least five years. And we will review an entire section on exactly what records to keep later on in your course. I-9 Employment Eligibility Verification. The Employment Eligibility Verification Form I-9 is a U.S. Citizenship Immigration Services form. It is used by an employer to verify an employee's identity and to establish that the worker is in fact eligible to accept employment in the United States. You can find the form at www.uscis.gov. Federal law requires you complete this form for every person whose name appears on the dealer's license and all of your future employees. You do not need to submit this form with your application, but you must store a copy of the form at the dealership location. Employer identification number. Sometimes we refer to this as an EIN. Before submitting your dealer's application, most dealers will obtain a, an employer identification number or EIN. This number is used to identify the new business you are starting and will be needed for tax purposes. The only business entity that does not obtain an employer identification number would be a sole proprietor with no employees. If a sole proprietor has employees, they would need to obtain an employer identification number as well. So most dealers will be required to obtain an employer identification number. Obtaining the EIN is very quick and it's very there's easy steps that will only take a few minutes. You can easily apply at the irs.gov website and have your employer identification number in just a matter of moments. After you've been assigned your employer identification number, you will need to keep it in a safe place. And uh, we're actually going to cover this process extensively later on in the course. Dealer educational course. A six-hour web-based pre-licensed training requirement applies only to dealers with an independent, that are obtaining an independent motor vehicle GDM. And these are the dealers that are licensed to buy, sell, or exchange used cars, trucks, motorhomes, neighborhood electric vehicles, recreational off-highway vehicles, which are ROVs, all-terrain vehicles, which are ATVs, and utility vehicles, which are UTVs. Most applicants for new licenses and renewal, and most renewal applicants that were licensed less than 10 years on September 1st of 2019 are going to be required to complete the one-time training. An owner or manager listed on the application must be the person to complete the course. If a person who completes the course leaves the business, then another owner or manager for the business must take the course prior to the next renewal. Okay, so if a dealer has been licensed for more than 10 years as of September 1st of 2019, then that dealer does not have to take the course. But some dealers that have been licensed for less than 10 years on September 1st of 2019 may have had to take that renewal course in order to renew their license. So that is something you certainly want to be aware of. You know, you are going to receive your certificate of completion at the end of this course. You will need to upload that through e-licensing, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a little bit. License fees. 
The fees for your dealer license are listed here. And this example shows fees that include one optional metal plate, and you would be able to pay for your license securely with credit card or e-check. Most, but not all, GDN dealers may receive up to two dealer plates. So I'll show you how to pay those fees when we get onto the e-licensing section here in just a few moments. Very important law. Texas law requires that all dealer licenses are displayed prominently at the business location. You know, I'm going to talk about this several times during, during the course. It is a law. Texas law requires that all dealer licenses are displayed prominently at the business location. All Texas dealer licenses are valid for two years from the date of issuance. If your dealer license requires a dealer surety bond, your license would expire on the same day that the bond expires. You may not start the operation of your dealership until you receive your license. All dealer license applications, renewals, and amendments must be submitted online through the e-licensing system. It is your responsibility to renew your dealer license in a timely manner. You should submit your renewal at least 45 days before your dealer license expires. Dealers have up to 90 days before and after an expiration date to renew. Late penalty fees are charged when the renewal application is submitted more than 30 days after the license expiration date. A $200 penalty must be paid if the application is submitted 31 to 60 days past the expiration date. The penalty increases to $400 if an application is submitted 61 to 90 days past the expiration date. A dealer may operate multiple locations within the same city limits. Dealers must apply for an amendment application in e-licensing if relocating within the same city or adding or removing an additional location. Any additional locations in the same city are considered supplemental locations and do not require a separate dealer license. Dealer licenses are city specific and a separate dealer license is required for every city a dealer is operating in. If a dealer relocates to a new city, then a new license, including a new dealer surety bond, would be required. Remember, independent motor vehicle dealers may also operate as a salvage dealer without obtaining a separate salvage license as long as it takes place only at the license location. A sales and use tax permit is also required if operating as a salvage dealer. Remember, once again, all GDN and salvage inventory must remain separated. Let's go over your dealership premises restrictions. Remember, retail dealers may not operate in the same building as wholesale dealers. Retail dealers may not operate in the same building as vehicle lesser licensees, and retail dealers may not operate in the same building as a lease facilitator license unless there's 100% ownership, like I discussed earlier, and salvage vehicles must always be kept separate from retail vehicles. You must notify the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles within 10 days of relocating, opening, or closing any dealership in the state.